Uh, today I'm going to share with you three ayat and the point of these three ayat is to illustrate how in a very subtle way Allah is telling us the scariest part of Judgment Day. So all three ayat are about Judgment Day um, and they use similar expressions and that's why they should be compared to each other because they use very similar expressions. But in some way, one of these three expressions has been em emphasized that just doesn't come out in translation. Like it's only found in the Arabic that it's been emphasized. So that's what I want to bring to your attention. Hatta idha ma ja'uha is the, the, generally the expression. Until they come to it. That's the expression, until they come to it. Now it is hellfire in front of them. They arrive at heaven in front of them. They arrive at you know judgment in front of them. In, in three of the cases that I am describing to you, all three of them, this is actually hellfire that's being described. They approach the, the, the very edge of hellfire. حَتَّى إِذَا مَا جَاءُوهَا شَهِدَ عَلَيْهِمْ سَمْعُهُمْ وَأَبْصَارُهُمْ وَجُلُودُهُمْ بِمَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ Until the very moment that they approach it, they arrive at it, their hearing, their eyes and their skin will start testifying against them about what they used to do. That's one ayah. Another ayah. حتى إذا جاءنا قال يا ليت بيني وبينك بعد المشرقين فبئس القرين until he comes to us meaning not to hellfire but he approaches Allah he comes before Allah and he says oh only, if only there was no there was a huge distance between you and me he's talking about his the the, the devil that used to kind of whisper to him all the time his personal assigned devil he's blaming him and saying I wish there was the longest the distance of two Easts between me and you what a terrible companion you've been that's the other one again beginning with until the time when he comes to us the final one hatta idha ja'uha futihat abwabuha until the time they approach it and, and until the very time where they come to it meaning the doors of hellfire its gates are opened the gates of hell are open so now there are three scenes in one scene, there, your skin, your hearing, your seeing is testifying against you. In another scene, you're wishing that between you and the devil that whispered to you, there was a gap of two Easts. And there's a third scene in which you've approached the gates and the gates have now just been opened. And in the Quran, until they come to it, until they come to us, until they come to it, all of them in English are the, roughly the same, but in one of them, Allah adds the word ma, it's tawqidan. In grammar, it's considered an auxiliary add-on that you can do without. If you don't say it, you can still have correct grammar. And so the ayah says, Hatta idha ma ja'uha. Not just hatta idha ja'uha, hatta idha ma ja'uha. So the Quran in a very, very subtle way is telling us that the scariest part of Judgment Day is when my hearing and my seeing and my skin is going to testify against me. That's the scariest part. It is scarier than meeting the devil that was there, you know, whispering to me all the time. It is scarier than hellfire itself. The gates opening itself, it's scarier than that. The most, the toughest part of all of this is when the thing that you thought was your own, my hands were my own, my eyes were my own, my ears were my own. I listened to what I want, said what I want, did what I want. I used this body for what I want. The skin basically includes the entire body, whatever I did with this body which was mine, is no longer mine. It is testifying against me. It is speaking out. It is incriminating me. No one can incriminate you better than yourself, your own body. Why are you testifying against ourselves? There's this almost, you know, insane conversation. Why are you testifying against myself? Even I don't, you know, this, you know, understand the principle in Islam, the skin that I have, these eyes that I have, the gift that Allah has given me. Right now I can turn this way and look that way and turn this way and look that way. I can do that. It's completely under my control. That's because Allah has given my nafs the ability to control this, these limbs. But these limbs don't belong to me. They belong to Allah. It's a rental for which I'm not paying anything. <laughs> and it's going to be returned to owner. And one day is going to come when, when it goes back to its owner where it's not going to be mine. The truth of the fact that it was never mine is going to be revealed. And so when I turned this way and looked, and I looked in disobedience to Allah, the eye itself was bothered because the eye belongs to Allah. The eye doesn't like to disobey Allah. I do. So the eye cried inside. Why is he making me do this? I don't want to do this. I wasn't made for this. I was made to obey Allah. Allah says, سَبَّحَ لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ Everything in the skies and the earth com continuously declares Allah's perfection. Everything is in complete submission to Allah in the entire universe, every cell, every atom, which is what my ha hands are made of, my eyes are made of. 
So this eye, these hands, this skin, it's actually been coerced into obeying me. I, th I think it's on my side. It's not. It's actually my slave. These are my slaves. And Judgment Day, they are freed so they can go back to their original master. And then they complain to their master, Master, he made me disobey you. He made me disobey you. That is the scariest day, <laughs> the scariest moment of judgment. When you realize what you don't own, when I realize what I don't own, what it is that we were given and how we took it for granted, how we are actually in complete ownership of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah Azza wa Jal give us real consciousness of Judgment Day and may Allah Azza wa Jal help us appreciate uh, uh, you know, the power of these words so you and I and our families are truly prepared of standing in front of Him.